Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to day two of our crochet series, Rediscovering the Art of Crochet. Um, so yesterday we had a very informative session on, on um, crochet and how to get started for beginners. Also uh, all about yarns and reading patterns and diagrams, and also a little bit about uh, how to start a crochet business. If you uh, were not uh, present yesterday, you will be able to view the recording of the session when it's on the Collaborative Learning Cafe website. Yeah. So on behalf of Collaborative Learning Cafe, a very warm welcome to all of you who have joined us today. And I see some fami familiar names here. So uh, we're really, we're really happy to have you. We have um, quite an interesting lineup for today. Uh, before, before we get into that, though, let me just briefly introduce our speakers. OK, first we have Ornella Menezes. Now, Orle Ornella is our youngest speaker. She's all of 21 years old, and she's already worked with um, designers like Wendell Rodericks and Ninoshka from Saligao, and she's currently working with an international fashion designer, JJ Valia. All of this while doing her TYBSC in chemistry. So we are happy to have her here. We also have Maria Elena Pereira, who is uh, our Amigurumi specialist. Um, she's going to tell you all about uh, Amigurumi today, and that's a slightly different form of uh, crochet. And she also teaches, I believe. So if you'd like to learn from her, you please get in touch with her. Um, Jacqueline Fernandez is joining us from um, Manglo. Jacqueline is a diehard fan of crochet. Yeah, She's learned to crochet when she was in the eighth standard. And a couple of years ago, she started her own label called Jack's Addicted to the Needle. She mostly makes customized crochet products, ranging from bookmarks to amigurumi. And uh, we are, we're very happy to have her here as well. Last but not the least is Celia Menezes. Now, Celia is a banker by profession, but she crochets as a hobby. Um, she uses it as a stress buster. She makes time to do it after her working hours, and she works on a lot of projects, mostly for patent testing, which she'll tell you all about. OK, um, before we get started, I just want to ask all our participants here to kindly make sure that their mics and their cameras are turned off for the duration of the session so as to not cause any distractions to our speakers, yes? Um, again, I also want to point out that this session or these talks are, there are not going to be any demonstrations because we don't have the, the band, uh, band space for that. We don't have the bandwidth for that. Um, this is more uh, knowledge and expertise sharing. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to take them at the end of the session after all our four speakers have had a chance to share what they, they'd like to with you. OK, with that, I will bring Ornella on. Over to you, Ornella. Thank you, Sheena. A piece of yarn is of no value until it's turned into a beautiful piece of crochet. Good evening, everyone. I am Ornella Menezes, and I started crochet at a young age of 12. The art of crochet was introduced to me by my mother at a very young age. I was always fascinated when I saw my mother do it and could not wait to start my first piece in crochet. At the age of 12, I started my first piece. At first, it took me a while to figure out as to how to go about, but with the help of my mother, I finished 
my first piece within three days. My mother led through example, and the passion was passed down to me. Inspired and motivated by my mother, I soon mastered the art of crochet, and no sooner did I know I was working with fashion designer Wendell Rodericks in his show, The Zentangle Collection. Wendell Rodericks approached me and asked me to design some jewelry pieces for him. I had never done something like this before, but I decided to take my art to the next level and give it a try. My art was also displayed in the Wendell Rodericks Design Space Showroom, where I tried different designs and made intricate jewelry pieces. On the 5th of January, 2020, the day started with people smiling and congratulating me. Little did I know I was featured on the Naveen Times as Kolwale's youngster who created Statement Crochet Jewelry for Wendell Roderick's Zentangle Collection, which featured in the Lotus Makeup India Fashion Week in Delhi. In months time, I was a well-known youngster who loved the way of a piece of yarn could be turned into a beautiful piece of art. I then also got a chance to work with fashion designer Nanoshka from Saligao and was also recommended by Wendell Rodericks to his best friend, Miss Maria Lewis, who then introduced me to an international designer, JJ Valaya, where I got a chance to showcase my artwork. There are many benefits of crochet. So here are some points that I have listed how crochet has helped me in my life. It's a stress buster. There is nothing like concentrating on a pattern you love. Plus the steady use of your hands and the pleasant feel of yarn to take your cares. It keeps your mind active. The elements of math involved in crocheting, counting your stitches, being aware of the beginnings, ending of rows, increasing and decreasing of patterns, etc. All help to keep your thinking process sharp, which in a way many experts agree. It contributes to mindfulness and relaxation. The huge mindfulness moment that has growing around colors of different textures of a variety of yarn is a relaxation technique that also respects crochet as a perfect vehicle for mindfulness. It increases self-esteem. The simple act of finishing off a project can have a positive effect on crocheters and can rise their sense of self-esteem. Getting something done from start to finish, whether a large bedspread or a table runner, can bring with it a sense of effectiveness and joy that cannot be underestimated. Crochet boosts serotonin. Studies show that crochet helps release serotonin in the body, leading to a wide host of health benefits. The major benefit is that this is a natural antidepressant. Many people say that crochet is a great therapy. There are countless reasons for this and serotonin releases is one of them. Serotonin is also a natural pain reliever and studies show that crochet can help with chronic pain conditions. Crochet offers a positive distraction. The value of this can't be underestimated in terms of both physical and mental health. Taking your mind off of chronic pain can help it seem goes a long way. Adding to the natural pain relief properties of the crafts, serotonin releases, breaking the ruminating cycles of the mind with crochet adds to the reduction of depression. Any time that you're experiencing stress, anxiety, 
or overwhelm, it can help to pick up your crochet hook and focus on a project. Crochet is a tactile craft. Crochet means that you are working with fiber, which can have such a great impact on your skin. The soft touch of a perfect baby alpaca yarn can soothe your soul on the darkest of days. In addition to the feeling of the fiber itself, pay attention to the benefits of the motion of the craft. The rhythmic condition of the crochet stitches is soothing for the body. It offers a meditative sensation that helps pull you out of anxiety and into ease. It is good for your body. As well as being a mood lifter, crochet has proven health benefits as the small repetitive movements involved can keep your hands, arm and fingers supple and your eyes sharp. So these were some points that have helped me all through these years. Thank you so much and I hand over to Maria. Maria, you're on mute. Good evening, everyone. I am Maria Elena Pereira from Sangolda, and I'm going to be speaking about Amigurumi today. Um, one minute. Okay. So, Amigurumi is a Japanese art of crocheting or knitting uh, any object or uh, dolls or any type of figures that you want to and uh, it is pronounced as ami guru me okay and it comes from the words ami which means crocheted and nui guru me which means stuffed doll and uh, it is a beautiful art to do and uh, i'm going to explain to you more about it next slide please yes so i started ami guru me in the year 2020 it was uh, the lockdown just started and everything was closed and my children were troubling me to get dolls for them. So I wasn't very keen on buying them dolls because they have a lot of dolls and they're really bored of them. So I thought, why not crochet a doll? And uh, this led me to start doing Amigurumi. Uh, these are the first dolls that I made. And uh, these are the first dolls that I made. And I'm very happy with them. Uh, my kids asked for these and I did it as per their request. I actually uh, did it with a lot of love and hard work. Next slide, please. Yes. So, Amigurumi comes from animism, which is the belief that gods belong to everything, like water, food, nature, buildings, houses, even technology. So, basically, these figures, these dolls, each of them was associated with a spirit or a god, and it was very popular in the 1950s in Japan. Uh, next. Yes, these are the materials that you need to get started with Amikurumi. Uh, they're very simple, they are readily available, and uh, it's not a lot of materials, so you just need a, like, a little workspace to work with all these. You need yarn. Uh, basically, I use acrylic yarn for Amigurumi because they are soft. They come in many colors. They are readily available in the market and online as well. And uh, you can try to use other other yarns, but I find acrylic very practical for Amigurumi. Then you need your crochet hooks. You get crochet hooks of varying sizes. Uh, depends on your yarn size. You can choose your crochet hook and you can even do it with double yarn or triple yarn. You can even combine yarns together if you want to combine colors or make it thicker. You can even use bulky yarn. So there are a lot of options there depending on what your project is. Then scissors for sure you need it in every art uh, to do every kind of art. Uh, stitch markers. Stitch markers are used to mark your rows because when we start doing amigurumi, we do shapes like spheres or uh, egg shapes, cylinders, and they work as a spiral. So when you get when you do it as a spiral and you don't count, you may lose the row. So to know where you are, the beginning or an end of each row, you need a stitch marker. It makes it much more easier. Um, you need the stuffing, which is very important. 
Uh, I use polyfill because polyfill doesn't come out. Otherwise, you have uh, cotton stuffing as well, but that appears as little pills or little balls outside the uh, toy, outside the figure. Once you're done in time, it just spills off. And polyfill is a much better option. Uh, you need your darning or yarn needle. Now, this is to hide the tails. That's the end of the thread when you're attached everything or you finished you have finished uh, crocheting the whole uh, shape you need to hide your yarns or even to attach eyes or to do embroidery or you know the needle is very handy and lastly you need safety eyes nose buttons felt contrasting yarn for embellishing the face so the easiest way to, if you're a beginner and amigurumi the best option are the safety eyes they come with washers behind them which fix very uh, firmly to the uh, to the object. So then you have even uh, your buttons. You can even use buttons as eyes. So creativity is all up to you. You can use even these embellishments, the stones. You can use sequins. You can do anything you want. Uh, the, the sky is the limit. Yes. So these are the basic shapes used for amigurumi. The, they are very easy to do. There's a sphere shape an egg shape and cylinder shape. The sphere and the egg shape are mostly used for the bodies, for the head, and the cylinder shapes are used for arms and legs, okay? And the size of it, you can do, you have to follow a pattern for all of this amigurumi, you have to follow a pattern. So the size depends on the pattern and what you're trying to make. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Yes. So these are the terms and abbreviations used in amigurumi patterns. This is very easy and very easy to understand and follow. You have CH, which is for chain. Chain are the, are the when we crochet the loops that we make, those are called chains. Then you have SC, which is single crochet. Um, single crochet basically means like when you put your needle through the stitch and you pull a loop and you have two loops on your needle and then you yarn, you grab the yarn, yarn over and pull through both. That's a single crochet. Half double crochet, that is HDC. HDC is the same thing as single crochet, but here you yarn over first and then you put your needle through the stitch and pull, uh, pull the yarn through. So you have three loops on your needle. And you have to yarn over again and pull it through all three. That's a half double crochet. Now, the double crochet, which is DC, is the same thing as the half double crochet, but you don't pull through all three loops. You pull through two first, and then you yarn over and pull through the last two. A slip stitch is a stitch where you put your needle through, you yarn, you yarn over, you, sorry, you pull the yarn through, and the same yarn, you pull it through the loop. You don't yarn over again, so you have only one loop on, on your needle. Stitch marker. The stitch markers are here important for the rows, as I said before. Now an increase. An increase is basically making two stitches from one stitch. So you get, it widens here. If you want to widen any part of your pattern, you do this, use an increase. A decrease is basically taking two stitches, combining them to make them one. So here you get tighten, you, it, it tightens here. Increases widening and decreases tightening. So uh, the magic ring. The magic ring is a basic circle which is used to start most of your amigurumi projects. The ones which are sphere shape, egg shape, cylinder, all of them require a magic ring. A magic ring is very simple. I have uh, uh, shown it to you on the slide here. You just begin by making a backwards J with the end of your yarn cross end of the yarn behind the yarn coming from the skein. At this point, you will need to pinch or hold the yarn together where they cross. So you need to hold it so you don't lose that. Let yarn from the skein fall behind the loop. Insert hook and pull yarn through your ring. Pull the loop all the way through and up to top of ring. Use your middle finger, continue to hold the loop you just made to the top of the ring. You can now let go of the ring with your left hand where the two ends cross. So once you get your loop through, you can let go of your other hand. But you still need both hands to hold. I still use both of it to hold. It's much better. Then you chain one for SC and HDC patterns. So after you pull a loop, you need to chain on that to fix it on the thread, on the ring. So you can crochet as much stitches in the ring as your pattern calls for. 
okay so at the end you have to just you have to pull the yarn which is the short yarn which is hanging on the left side you just pull it the whole ring will tighten and it will close and you'll get a very neat finish this can also be done using two chains and doing all the stitches in the one in the one loop that is there but this magic ring is much neater it's a neater option next slide please yes so basically these are the dolls i made now the large doll has wires in them bendable, bendable wires in them so once you progress in amigurumi and you're making dolls you can even make barbie dolls you add wires so their hands can bend they can be made to sit like i've shown the doll with the purple hair she's sitting this is what the wires are used for the doll at the end with the green dress is there's no wire in that doll but it, it is a just a doll which you can make as a keychain or just keep it as a soft toy yes next slide please yeah so these are these are all the things i have done um the the ones which do not have a wire are the ones at the top the two dolls on the left and then the jellyfish at the bottom doesn't have anything the chikara is a is a character from the movies green ham and eggs mm -hmm. Green eggs and ham, green eggs and ham, and there there are wires in that, and it it is bendable. So the chikaraf can be made to run, can bend. It's a very nice thing. And the other ones, like the cat, the ones on the bottom right, the whale, the smiley, and the cat, that was made by my nine year old daughter because she loved Amigurumi so much. I taught her, and she started making it. <laughs> yes. So Amigurumi is a lovely art. I got addicted to it. I'm obsessed with it. And uh, I keep trying to do new, newer things on it. Now you can use the safety eyes as I've shown you. You can make out which are the safety eyes. The one in the whale and the cat are safety eyes. And the jellyfish. The rest of the eyes I have embroidered. Even the small puppy has uh, safety eyes in them. So if you're good at embroidery, you can even embroider the features. Otherwise, easiest thing are the safety eyes. Next, please. As we all know, Christmas is approaching, so I decided to make the nativity scene. And uh, these are all the characters from there. There's Mother Mary, St. Joseph, Baby Jesus, the angel, there's the donkey, the ox, and the three kings. I basically made the body. Uh, there's a cardboard at the bottom of them inside so that they couldn't stand properly. So you can even add cardboard when for figures like this. So they have uh, they are steady, you see. And I have also used embellishment like these stones, sequins, just to make it a little better. And uh, I, I love doing this. I, each piece of mine has all my love in it and hard work. And... Uh, uh, my kids love to do it. I've taught them. So it is an easy thing to learn. If I, like any any age, a, an adult or a kid, any age can learn it. It's very easy. Next slide, please. Yes. So I do take orders and I do give classes as well. Please, if anyone is interested or anyone has any questions or need to know anything about Ami Gurumi or where to procure the materials from or whatever, I can help you and all that. Just uh, call or WhatsApp on the number mentioned below. Thank you, everybody. Over to Jackie now. Thank you so much, Maria, for that. And um, that was lovely to learn about Amrumi. Uh, I'm Jacqueline Fernandez, uh, AKA Jacks from Addicted to the Needle, and I'm here to inspire you I give you inspiration and tell you what inspires me to crochet. So here's something. Currently, next please. I'm working on my PhD. So yes, for those who know to crochet, they would understand this. Those who are learning to crochet, don't worry about it. You will get your time. So humor is something that inspires me a lot. Next. Uh, humor is very important. Uh, it helps you. It uh, it challenges you. You know, uh, someone can crack a joke. Uh, you might get jokes on WhatsApp, Pinterest, Google, anything. Sometimes even the simplest things, you know, crack me up and I'll say, oh, you know what, I should do that. Apart from humor, next, please. 
I'm inspired by plays, movies, and books. This is one of my favorite pieces that I've worked in 2010 for my brother, inspired by Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Um, it's a pencil case, which I made for my brother. The lining and the zipper was totally done by hand. It still looks brand new. So this is one of my all-time favorite pieces that I've worked from to, in 2010. Next. Oh. Remy, I'm sure people who are, you know, having kids uh, into food would have definitely watched Ratatouille. One of my favorite all-time movies and me being a foodie, this is on my to-do list. So I had posts, I, it was inspired to do Remy. And what I did was I crocheted this, put it on my, and I put it onto Instagram and said, guess who's in my kitchen? And I had a lot of people commenting like saying, oh, he's cute, you know? And finally, I got approached by people saying, can you please make this for me? And for them, it was to give friends of theirs who were into food, who are getting into, you know, being chefs, cooks, whatever. So this guy has gone all over the place. Next. Who doesn't know the Minions? If you've got kids around Despicable Me, the Minions and the banana is something that everybody should know about. Um, inspired by that and also inspired by a friend of mine who I call Minion, I created this uh, coin purse, which on one side has Kevin and one side has Stuart. Next, please. This is something that uh, is an all-time favorite of mine, Dr. Seuss, The Cat in the Hat. So I created a bookmark and then I realized it can be used also as a pen or pencil topper with the you know, the tail hanging out at the end of it. So apart from uh, plays, uh, books, and movies, I'm also inspired by nature. Next, please. So th this is what inspires me. Nature inspires me. Apart from crocheting uh, jobs, I'm also a solo biker. And till, you know, the COVID time, still the COVID hit us, I used to do a lot of road trips. And... I got influenced a lot by nature, wildflowers, fallen leaves, which are eaten by caterpillars. I would just click pictures of them, you know, and uh, make notes about this. And, and, you know, later on, I'll come back and I'll say, you know what, this inspired me. And I'll start working on it. So from earrings to appliques to teacups to, you know, I experiment with a lot of material. And I find it quite interesting that, you know, there's a lot of uh, feedback that I've got that it's quite, um, many people like it. You know, they want to learn more about it. Next, please. During the pandemic uh, last year, I worked on filet crochet, which is like lace crochet, which is to your left, uh, a piece that took me a couple of days. Uh, it is still work in progress. Uh, I have done flowers into clips, you know, brooches, uh, bookmarks, you name it. So moving apart from nature, next, please. I also am a crazy person. So I love fun, cute things uh, from, you know, little quirky stuff to experimentation, like the monster Cyclops bookmark, the Frida uh, Dreamcatcher. The Marilyn Fish is one of my favorites because I always liked Marilyn Monroe. So I had to do something with that. Next, please. This is something that uh, sometimes uh, people get tickled about and some people call it creepy but I find it fun you know having a smash track bookmark uh, you can do it in any size the length of it depending on the book but this is a piece that uh, I get asked about a lot next for couples um, I enjoy working free patterns at times so I take a free pattern and I do my own twist to it uh, this I had done for a very cute couple that I got to know uh, a couple of years back. And I said, okay, you know, I've done the body. Now what more can I do? What more characteristics can I give it? So I gave the woman on her shell, you know, some artsy greenery while I gave the guy a lovely bow and, you know, a hat. But they still need their eyes in place. So fun and quirky stuff is something that inspires me even if i see something online i'm like oh i think i can work that so i'm always inspired by fun quirky stuff next please christmas i think is my all-time favorite uh, season 
and uh, I worked on a lot of projects. I'm inspired mostly by the spirit of Christmas. So from the Christmas tree to Rudy the Red Ro Red Nose Reindeer to the Tree Topper, and recently I started working on sheep. I got inspired by my brother Kevin to uh, to do sheep because our cribs at home had always a lot of sheep. Uh, you know, a lot and lot of sheep. So I got inspired by that. I said, why should I only do white? Let's do, you know, the black sheep of the house. You know, sometimes we have, a, we all call ourselves the black sheep of the house. So I did a black sheep and then I did a colored sheep, you know, for the LGBT community. So I do a lot of stuff during Christmas time. Next. Coming to fusion. Um, I'm more of a do-it-yourself kind of a person, and I love to see what happens when you combine two things together. So two years back, I needed something uh, to put my stuff in when I just run out of the house. And I love my denims. So I did a small denim pouch, which actually has a sari clip on it. So the owl pouch, the owl flap opens, and you can just put your hand inside to put a little change and your keys in it and clip it onto maybe your skirt, your jeans, or whatever, and walk out of the house. The cactus pin cushion I did recently is because I started getting into another form, which is sewing, and I don't want to leave pins around. So I had a small ice cream tub. The whole ice cream tub, I laced it with a grocery bag, paper grocery bag, cut it up, put that, did a small little window, put a little bit of plastic in it, felted it, you know, covered it with felt inside and then crocheted the whole top part wherein I can put this. Now, for me, this is fun, you know, and I also realize it's a nice gift to give people who are into crocheting, who are into sewing as well, because you're recycling things around, which is really good. Uh, next, please. Uh, I was given bangles for Ganesh Chaturthi uh, a couple of years back and unfortunately my wrists are too big so what I did was I didn't want to keep the bangles aside and I created earrings for myself now knowing the quirky me I couldn't have them at the same you know the same type so what I did was I created a sunflower on one side and a you know a a, a butterfly on the other side and I wore them and people were like whoa this is cool from where did you buy it and I said I made it and there's always a lovely sense, you know, when you see people's expressions, gosh, you actually made that. And I'm like, yeah, you know, because people know me for other things. And suddenly when they see my work, they're like, shucks, we didn't know you're into this. So you can do anything with bangles. And yes, they're still there. They have their own case, not broken as yet. So I've done uh, earrings to a dream catcher as well. Next. This is something I did fairly recent. Uh, I bought some nice, uh, fun material online. Uh, since the COVID times, nothing is open. And I found this lovely material online and I bought it. And I said, you know what? I want to stitch, uh, you know, sew garments for myself. And I said, oh, shucks, I don't know how to do the top part. So what do I do? And then I was looking at my stash of yarn because I keep rolling my yarn in. And I see these colors and I'm like, oh, wow why don't I do the whole yoke myself? And this is a first for me. So I'm moving out of my box most of the time. And I said, let's play about a little bit. What more can I do? And I said, okay, let's do motives and stuff. So I actually did this. This is the very first for me for a house dress. And uh, I'm quite happy with it, actually. So I do a lot of fusion and I find it quite enjoyable and quite interesting because you just go, you can let your mind go wild with it. Moving on, next please. Two important people in my life, apart from friends, there are two important people in my life, my mom and my brother Kevin. My mom always complains and says, oh, you know, my daughter makes all this, but she doesn't give me anything. What she doesn't realize is every trip of hers, she has always had a crochet product from a shawl to a beret to a hat for her saris. She's always got a potli for her outside. She's got a sling bag. So she's, you know, she says, oh, I can't put my mobile. I make her a mobile pouch. So she's always got something. And she's one of my favorite models to work with. My brother is not only uh, my inspiration. He is also the one who kicks me and says, go on, 
do more, do more. And he's not only my model, he's my inspiration. He's also my photographer. He's also the quirky one to help me, you know, say, oh, you know, you can do better. You know, he keeps pushing me forward. And um, I've done a lot of stuff and I, I, there's nothing I can't do without him around, you know. He's, he's my driving force and my backbone. Moving on. Next, please. There are two people, two friends of mine. Aruna, who's on the left, has been a friend, best friend of mine for 30 plus years. Now, uh, she is way different from me, but the part of her that inspires me is she will send me pictures of herself at a function and says, you know what? I'm still carrying the clutch you've given me five years back. The picture on the right of her is what she did recently. And I was like, wow, you're carrying the same clutch. She's like, I love it. I wear it. I, I take it with me everywhere. And people are amazed. And that inspires me, you know, when your best friend comes to you and says, I'm still using the same things, man. I'm like, wow. You know, it keeps you going further. And another person... Uh, is Savita, who I got to know a couple of years back. And uh, she got inspired to get back into crochet because of me uh, seeing the crazy stuff I did. And uh, unknowing to me, she's moved to uh, the US and suddenly she says, Oi, you know, I saw this particular pattern and I had already worked it. So I said, she shares it and says, Look at this elephant that I did. I said, Goof, I've done the same thing. And then we got to realize we have done the same pattern, our own twists. One in thread and one in yarn. We had a good laugh and uh, we keep pushing ourselves forward. You know, uh, she's a different uh, crochet artist altogether, and I'm in my quirky world altogether. But family is important. You know, they give you that goal. Your friends should push you, motivate you to do better. Next, please. Prayer Angel. Um, this is something that is very near and dear to me. Angels are something that I enjoy the most. I do them with yarn. I do them with uh, jute thread. I do them with threads. And the story behind the prayer angel was uh, a very good biker friend of mine lost his father. And I really didn't know how to console him. And I said, you know what? I don't like giving flowers at a funeral or you know, when I go to meet people for a puja or whatever. So I said, let me crochet an angel. And while I was crocheting, I was praying that the family gets solid, you know, comfort and uh, they find their way, you know, they're, they're guided by God's grace and everything. And I kept praying. And then I found this prayer online. So I put it behind it. I hand wrote it and put it behind it and I gave it to them. And that has become my signature, you know. When you don't know how to console somebody, you just give it and, you know, they know you're there for them. When someone is sick, I send one. You know, someone's going into surgery, I send one. Someone is sick, I send one. Or sometimes just, you know, out of the blue, if I feel I've thought of somebody, I send them and say, you're my angel. You know, um, it's a nice way of, rather than flowers, I find this easier for me to tell them that I'm with you. So it's really, really important uh, for me that when I do something, it has to give, it has to be me 100%. Um, I pray when I do these angels and the prayer angel is something very, very close to me. So yes, that is something I enjoy. Uh, next, please. These are my tips for uh, those in the trade, those who want to join. Uh, please remember, do not compare yourself to other crocheters. I'm pretty green altogether. You've come across many uh, in this uh, yesterday and today. And we are all, you know, crocheters uh, with different twists and turns in what we do. Do not compare yourself. Be quirky. Be different. Um, experiment with different materials. It's good to experiment with different materials. And I always say practice makes perfect. Never mind. You know, it's okay to make a mistake. Look at it. Say, okay, I won't do it again, you know. Uh, don't do the mistake and say, oh, you know what? Nobody's going to recognize it. Remember, your, your product speaks about you, okay? It is a total uh, work of art by you. And it should show that you've, you've worked on it with all your heart and soul, not for the monetary benefits, but for the love of crochet. I always say, do not give up. Like I say, I am doing my PhD. I'm always doing my PhD. I have a whole stash of stuff that I have put away because I quit halfway. But I always say, do not give up. At some point of time, you will go back, look at it and say, 
shucks, you know what, I can do this again. And I always go back. I take something out and say, oh, you know what, let's just go back and do it. So do not give up. Uh, when you're not up to a project, you might get upset uh, or anything happens to you. At that point of time, stop that. Stop the project. Take a break. Go do something else. If it means uh, go for a walk, cook, dance, sing, anything, just, just keep it aside. Sometimes what happens is uh, that helps you boost yourself up. Because if you work at that point of time, you will do more damage than good. So take a break, do something else, do your own twist to something that's already done. I always do my own twist. Um, take a free pattern. You get a lot of free patterns on Pinterest, on Google. Do a free pattern. Uh, do your own twist to it. See what kind of styling appeals to you. And then put it out there, you know. Uh, even with paid patterns, I'm sure the next speaker is going to talk to you more about it. So um, do your own twist and explore. See what's out there. Explore, experiment, uh, be yourself, you know. Uh, crocheting is all about being oneself. Uh, and what's important is, um, I've realized that many times they say, oh, I'm a crochet artist. And they're like, isn't crochet for old people? You know, and I'm like, excuse me, you know. And the moment I get that, I found this lovely quote from happilyhooked.com that says, next, please. The crocheter is part mathematician, part artist, and part strategist. So that's my go-to when anybody says, isn't that for old people or whatever. I just say, oh, hold on. We're wizards. You know, we create art. We turn this into that. You know, we, we like pop out things and stuff like that. So I always say this and, you know, have a good laugh at it. So, yes. Next, please. Well, I have come to the end of uh, my presentation. Thank you so much. In case you all have any questions, queries, you all need a boost, you need a start, uh, you just want to talk about crochet, uh, you want to learn, you have questions, queries, please feel free to reach out to me on my email address. Or you can, you know, get me on uh, Instagram more than on Facebook. Message me. I'll be more than happy to help you. And for all those who are they get, trying to get into it, Get into it. It's a beautiful thing to get into. Uh, have fun. Um, God bless. And I shall pass this on to the last speaker of the day, Celia. Good evening, everybody. It's me, Celia. And I'm going to talk to you about how I got started and my journey into crochet. So everybody has started their journey into the crocheting world, whether at a young age or later on in life. And many have continued doing crochet while others have taken a break, resumed after a few years, whereas some have just ended their journey. With me, my journey started while I was just a little five-year-old girl. My paternal aunt taught me to crochet using scrap thread that was used in grocery stores. Today, we don't need a teacher to teach us crochet. We have YouTube tutorials in almost all the languages for beginners, as well as for experienced crocheters who probably have a difficulty in deciphering a new or a complicated stitch. It was in 2014, while I was surfing the net, I came across a crochet group called MICQ that stands for Mother India Crochet Queens. I read that this group of Indian women were attempting to break the Guinness record for the biggest crochet blanket in the world. I immediately registered as a member of this group and from then on, there was no looking back. I was hooked. I found so many like-minded friends. I couldn't believe there was a big wide crochet world out there that I never dreamt of existed. And of course, eventually I got my Guinness certificate after we broke the record that year. 
I started posting pictures of my crochet doilies and bags and other projects on Facebook and Instagram. I took part in competitions organized by various crochet groups on Facebook. And it was then that my work caught the attention of some crochet designers. And I was asked whether I was interested in testing written patterns designed by them. And that was the beginning of my journey as a pattern tester. Of late, I've been testing a lot of doily patterns. These patterns are designed by our very own Indian designers, as well as a few international designers. So as testers, we are bound by some rules. We are forbidden to, sh to or restricted from sharing any patterns that we have tested. These designers, they sell their written patterns online, either in their Etsy shops or on a site called Ravelry. So these patterns once purchased cannot be shared because that's how the designers earn their money for a living. It's a lot of hard work that goes into designing and writing patterns. So basically there are copyrights and unauthorized reproduction or distribution is illegal besides being unethical. Personally, I'm really glad I embarked on my crocheting journey. It's given me happiness and fulfillment in my life. There have been various stressful situations at work because I'm a banker and uh, crochet has helped me to keep focused. I just hope to continue to crochet as long as I can hold a, knee, a hook and a yarn in my hand. A lot of people think that crochet is a dying art. I, for one, am very optimistic. I think crochet is making a comeback in a big way. Long live crochet. Thank you so much. Thank you, Celia. I mean, uh, I think you ended that with a bang. I have to agree with you. Um, also, looking at all the um, people that we've had joining us over yesterday and today, I do feel that crochet's making a comeback. And um, I hope all of you have um, enjoyed our, our effort in, in helping you rediscover the art of crochet. It is our, our greatest desire that um, we have we, we share our passion and our joys with you yeah um we have some time now for questions so if you do have any questions and put them in the chat box we can pick them up um maria can i just bring you on to address a few questions that are here i know you yes. have sent replies but just for the benefit of everyone um, people have asked where to get patterns where to get material and what yarn you use so okay so, yes um so if you want patterns you can just go to uh go to youtube and type ami gurumi with the uh, figure or whatever you want say for example amigurumi uh, unicorn if you do that you will get videos showing you how to do it with the written patterns also and they are for free so you can just learn that way and the materials i get them from amazon it's easier to get it from there because it's everything is not available in the shops stuffing is not available in the shops uh, safety eyes are not available in the shops around here so amazon is the best place to get your yarn uh, I use this yarn called Baby Soft. It's very nice and it's really, uh, it's it's nice. It's got a lovely finish. There's no yarn sticking. There's no thread sticking out of the yarn. Yes? Uh, anything else? Yeah, we'll take them as we come along. Thank you for that. Right. Thank you. Okay, so Avelina is asking for offline classes in Fonda. Um, I I personally don't know anyone giving offline classes in Ponda Avelina. Um, but you can maybe um, join our Crochet Goa platform and make your inquiries there. So that if there is anyone around, uh, you, you could get to know. 
but your next best bet would be an online class, yeah? Okay. Um, Maria's email has been shared. Um, Jackie, Edith likes your Christmas design tree and your sheet, et cetera, and is asking uh, where she can get patterns. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the compliment. Uh, these are all free patterns which I've got on Pinterest. Um, your, I think the best source for any patterns you want to look at is Pinterest and YouTube. Like uh, Maria mentioned, YouTube has a whole wide range. Uh, you have patterns from Europe, which are very interesting. Uh, you have patterns also from... Uh, you know, the UAE and the Gulf regions, which are also interesting. So try it with YouTube. And the next best place is Pinterest. I love Pinterest. Pinterest is like my go-to for uh, patterns um, when it comes to this. Um, also, another thing I would like to add to uh, uh, Maria when she was talking about the materials. Um, I'm, I'm sure uh, China also mentioned uh, this yesterday that there are various sites like Crochet Bella, Magic Needles, uh, apart from Amazon, where you can actually buy various kinds of yarns. So uh, you can try that or you can recycle, you know, um, you can recycle yarns as well. So it's a, a mix of everything. Most of these things that I'm showing you are like almost a decade old. Uh, the new stuff I have yet to post onto my um, Instagram page. So, yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, Pinterest and YouTube. Just hit Pinterest and YouTube. You're good to go. Stay on, Jackie. She also wants to sure. know if it's possible to buy the Prayer Angel pattern and finished product. Uh, you can. Uh, just link up with me on Instagram and uh, I'll get back to you with that. Jackie, just post your contact details and your Instagram, Facebook, email in the, in the chat. Yeah, so they can sure. access it there. Sure, will do. Um, so if anyone has missed yesterday's uh, session, it will be available on uh, the CLC website. Um, okay. Simonetta is asking how to wash, dry, and store crochet products, uh, garments, doilies, etc. cetera. Um, would this vary with the type of yarn being used? Um, Ornella, can I hand that over to you? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, so I wash the I wash my crochet oily, and then I block it. So uh, on a blocking mat that I brought from Pradhan Embroidery Stores. So uh, first I use pins to bring it in shape, and then I starch it. And uh, I wrap my uh, crochet in a muslin cloth to store it. Does the uh, washing differ with the type of yarns being used? Um, um, not really. I'm, I mostly work with cotton, so. I would say different. wash very gently. <laughs> yeah. Although I know that if um, the yarn is, is machine washable, then it's safe to put into the, into the machine. But if, if I put so much of... Um, time and effort into a crochet product, I will wash it very gently. Okay, um, thank you, Ornella. Do we have a WhatsApp group? Um, there is a WhatsApp group that we run. Maria, Zuza is asking. Maria, if you could just send me your um, number, WhatsApp me, and let me know that you'd like to join our WhatsApp group, I can add you on. I will leave my number in the chat box. Okay. Um, Maria de Souza was asking that, yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, Sandra Pace wants to join the WhatsApp group. Yes, you can contact me, and I will add you on there. Um, okay. Molly is asking, what is the way to start a crochet business as a living? Uh, that's one question. And how do we know that the pattern we are following is not a copyright? Um, so for the first question, I don't know if we have um, Amrita here today. 
But um, Amrita gave us a small um, talk yesterday about how to start a crochet business, and you can catch her. You can catch her talk on the video recording, Molly. Uh, for your second question about how to know whether the pattern that you're following is not copyright, um, Celia, would you be able to take that? Uh, yes, actually, uh, there are a lot of pirated copies of patterns out there, especially uh, on Pinterest. And uh, so you have to be really careful when you, uh, if you see a watermark, most of the uh, most of the patterns which have copyrights, they'll have a watermark on them. So you have to make sure you go to the blog and check whether they are paid patterns or whether they are free patterns. So that's the only way actually you can find out whether they are paid patterns or whether they are you know, whether pirated patterns, because there are a lot, especially on Pinterest. That's the only way I, I think you can tell the difference. All right, thank you. Um, Ambrose is inspired to do his PhD. Yes, Ambrose, why not? Uh, how can you starch the crochet? Uh, Ornella, how can you starch the crochet, please? Okay, I'm um, not too sure where Ornella is. Can anyone else offer tips on how to start starch crochet? Uh, sure, I, I can offer. Oh, Celia, would you like to take this? Uh, yeah, I don't mind. Uh, sure. Whatever, yeah. I, I'll, I'll tell you. Okay, so when uh, I normally starch a doily, I take some water and I use a little starch, maybe revive. You can use revive and uh, dilute it water and revive dilute it then you immerse your uh, project in the water the starch and water solution and then you spread it out on a blocking mat put it in shape pin it and leave it to dry a second alternative is you just dampen your project don't use starch just dampen it with uh, water and then you put it on a blocking board, you put your pins, and then you spray, you get a starch spray, you can spray the starch onto your project later on. So these are the two ways that you can starch your projects. Okay, great. Jackie, anything to add to that? I think Celia has uh, done a marvelous job of explaining it. So, She's covered yeah. it, yeah, yeah, all right. Um, Someone is saying the video is showing up as private, so I think maybe um, so Savio might be able to look into that. Okay, thank you very much, Michelle. Um, that's it. Any more questions? So whoever wants to be added to the WhatsApp group, please do send me a WhatsApp message just saying that you want to be added to the group and I'll add you on there. Um, okay, if, if there are no more questions, I guess we can... We can can I ask you a question, please? Priya, yes. I've been dying to get a crochet pattern for my dad's sweater and I still haven't got one. Can someone help me out there? You want a crochet pattern for a sweater? Yeah, a V-neck vest, sleeveless. Have you tried searching on the sites? I that, have. Mm -hmm. I have tried all the uh, sites. And, you know, uh, I'm just new with crochet. And mm -hmm. they're all cabled stitches. And I'm unable to follow a few. OK. Um, Priya, why don't you do one thing? Um, are you open to joining our Facebook group or a WhatsApp group? Because you will get a lot of uh, suggestions from people there. Yes, I have uh, joined, I think, the Crochet of Goa. Yeah. yeah. You, uh, you I'm can there just, already. Right. So if you just put in a request there saying what you're looking for, people are generally very helpful yeah. and they offer suggestions. And even on the WhatsApp group, you can get some Yeah, and, and, I've, and I've got, I've got a, uh, uh, you know, I don't have any worsted wool with me. Mm -hmm. I've got very simple wool. 
Okay. So that's another uh, query I'd like to put in. Okay. We'll connect. Thanks, Thanks yes. Sheena. No problem. Can I ask a question, Sheena? Sure. Teresa, you are yes. Yeah. Teresa. Yeah, I am uh, I'm working on a project. Yeah. I'm uh, following a pattern which is using a uh, cotton yarn of uh, four ply. But I'm using yarn of two ply. So how do I follow that pattern? Uh, the simplest thing. The yarn that I'm using is thinner compared to the four ply. Yes. Yarn. Yes. Um, I what I would do is I would take two yarns and crochet together with it. But I would also advise you to make if you're following a pattern, then there's probably a gauge there. So you'll have to make a swatch to see whether your stitches meet that gauge size. But if you double the yarn, that should do the trick. How I do that? Okay, yeah. okay. Because I'm doing something for a baby. So it is getting okay. very, uh, I mean, uh, very fine Small. compared yes, to yes. what I, what the image is. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, are there any more questions? Like if anybody wants to ask, they can unmute themselves and ask, or they can even type it in the chat box. Fine. If uh, there are no questions, I have to say a few things. Like, uh, especially, firstly, I want to thank all eight of you, uh, Jasmine, Sheena, Alan, Amrita, Anela, Maria Elena, Jacqueline, and Celia. I'm not sure if I've pronounced the names correctly. <laughs> but yeah, you all have done a very great job. Like, both the days were quite interesting and we could see the number of participants till the end did not go below 100. And instead it was like 150 for the whole time. So that shows how engaging the sessions were and how you all have kept their attention. So um, indeed a great job. Uh, the video of yesterday's recording is ready. I'll be sharing the link to each and every participant through WhatsApp in, in a while. Also, uh, I'll try to get the link of the WhatsApp group and um, I'll share the same with everyone as well. Uh, so if you're interested, you can just tap the link and join the group. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you all of you for uh, joining in and uh, especially the speakers for keeping it so interactive and uh, such a meaningful like two days workshop. Thank you so much. Thank you, Savio. I have to thank you as well. We've troubled you a lot and we couldn't have done it without you. Also, uh, Frederick for egging me on to do this and uh, Collaborative Learning Cafe, Father Mervyn for the opportunity to bring Crochet to this platform um, and to the ladies who, who joined me on this venture. A big, a big thank you. Yes. Um, just following up on your suggestion of adding the WhatsApp link onto the chat. Can we do that here now, Savio? Yeah, but then uh, I think we have around one or six participants and all won't be able to get it. So I'll be sending it to all the 232 participants. Maybe it will reach okay. out faster. OK, fine. All right. then. We'll Maybe in the chat, they might not be able to even just copy and paste it. And... That's fine. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, take care of yourselves. Have a good night. And happy crocheting. Yeah, please get that started. <laughs>